Okay, so I've received a, a little package in the post here from uh, Dennis at Kanga Products. And uh, this is my LNR MTR 5B. So let's, uh, let's get it open and uh, see what we get. So uh, opening up, we've got a um, receipt and a little note uh, with compliments from Kanga. Please note, do not use more than 12 volts. So it was the same for the MTR3B. Uh, you can uh, damage the uh, transceiver if you use too, uh, too much power. And you do have to be a little bit careful because some 12 volt batteries may be a little bit more than 12 volts. Okay. Put that to one side, a lovely bit of packaging. Thank you, Dennis. Um, what have we got here? We have a little pen cell battery, little um, button battery. So I think that's to retain the real time clock and user settings. So let me just put that to one side and then take out, take out the goods. Get rid of the box. So. Here in this packaging we have yeah, here we have the case. Two parts feels like aluminium and the hardware as well is being stored in there. So the uh, um, power plug, aerial connector, screws and the little cover that's going to go over the front of the display and also we have I may have to uh, may have to snip into here let me just cut that open we have electrostatic baggy and this contains the actual circuit board itself so that's it it's a fairly straightforward kit of parts um, just the circuit board to mount inside the case and then a little bit of soldering to add the antenna uh, and the power lead. So let's get building. The first thing I did was stick the self-adhesive feet to the bottom of the case. I just did this by eye but if you're super detail oriented you may want to create a little guide to position these as once they're stuck on there's really no going back. I added the BNC socket and the power socket. Note that the BNC and the hole it goes in are shaped. The hole has one flat edge to help prevent the socket rotating when you're twisting plugs in and out. There's a solder tag that goes on the inside and you should see that the paint has been removed from around the aerial socket position on the inside of the case. Just make sure this is nice and clean to ensure a good earth connection. I added the small Perspex screen which is simply held in place by four screws and nuts. To help you put your MTR 5B together without problems, Kanga UK have created a simple guide which you can download and have to hand as I have here or print out as you prefer. All the cables are pushed through from the underside of the circuit board, that's the side with the toroid coils on. Note that the orientation of the power cables isn't immediately obvious as there are no markings on the board but the negative side is clearly connected to the main ground plane of the circuit board and a quick check of the Kanga guide clearly shows that the negative side is closest to the edge of the board. The aerial connectors are much more clearly marked on the top of the board but note that on the side to solder the pads are very close to the metal switch housing. Make sure you don't get any solder bridges and that the wires are trimmed so that they can't short against the switch case. You get a little strip of felt that goes over the push buttons to help prevent ingress of dirt through the buttonholes in the case. There is a simple modification that I performed on my radio after using it in the dark. The blue backlit screen is great for operating in low light conditions, but the light around the LCD is visible through the opening in the front of the case. Its brightness compared to the main part of the display, combined with the very fine font used, mean that in the dark it makes the iris of each eye contract and you can't actually read the screen very clearly. It effectively appears too dark. Simply adding a bit of tape around the top and sides of the display help mask this. Only this centre part of the screen forms part of the 4 line by 16 character display area, so you can really go wild with your taping off. The circuit board actually mounts directly to the front case using four screws, one in each corner, which screw into the spacing posts on the PCB. 
So do the cables to the BNC socket and the power socket. You need to get both parts of the case very close, like this, because the cables are quite short. The MTR5B can be fitted with a button battery to power the real-time clock and retain your last settings when the radio is turned off. When I built mine, it wasn't immediately obvious which way up this battery goes, but this should now be clarified in the Kanga guide. I discovered later that the sprung arm on the battery holder should have had a positive symbol just here, but in my example this was missing. For clarity, the battery is installed with the positive side facing upwards. OK, that's it. This really is very simple to put together with just a little soldering. A quick check to make sure all is good and then we fit the two halves of the case together and fit the two screws to hold it all together. The last step is to fit the two knurled nuts on the headphone and key sockets. And here's the finished article. It looks and feels great. Hopefully this gives you a feel of the size and shape. I'll do a separate feature review later where I can share all of the detailed specifications of this transceiver. The finish is not of the quality you might find on a radio from one of the big three, and this is an observation I would make about all of the LNR radios. However, these are really targeted at portable ops, and it's likely your radio isn't going to stay in pristine condition, so this is no big deal. The power plug provided is about 10 millimeters long, I think, and this is actually just a little bit too long to push in to the socket fully. This is a minor point, but if it bothers you, uh, you can simply buy a slightly shorter power plug. The LCD display is great and displays the frequency, paddle speed, time and battery. And if I turn the lights down, you can see just how well the backlit display works. Next to the MTR3B, it looks like a giant. But compared to the Ellicraft KX1 and the UKIT's HB1B, you can see just how small the MTR5B is. These are all amazing little QRP CW only radios. The MTR3B is a miniature marvel with three bands and a basic but functional user interface. Its big brother is still almost pocket sized and super lightweight, adds a comprehensive display and covers five bands. The KX1 has two to four band options, adds far more control and can be used to receive SSB and AM. And finally the UKIT's HB1B offers KX1 features but at a price point between the two mounted toppers. I just feel the quality isn't as good, but as a budget entry point to the trail radio scene you just can't knock it. The MTR5B is available from LNR Precision in the US or for UK and European hams it's available from Kanga UK. Okay, 73s guys, get out there and enjoy your radio.